Welcome back to my dying studio here at Fiber for the People headquarters. Um, I'm taking some time today to work on some special orders and I uh, had like, some thoughts kind of running through my head and I thought this is a cool opportunity to just chat with you guys while I get some work done um, here uh, in my dying studio. So I'm just going to dye up some yarn and I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about a question that I get asked a lot um, through email and uh, it's just something that it's, it's curious to me um, how often I kind of think about this and why I choose not to do this. Um, so I wanted to kind of chat with you guys about that. Um, the question is why I don't do wholesale, um, why I don't sell my yarn wholesale in yarn stores or do retail orders or, or things like that. In the beginning, when I first started doing this just a little over a year ago, when I was asked to wholesale my yarn, it was definitely something where I thought, um, do I, maybe I should be doing this. Maybe, um, maybe this is something that I should be doing. I noticed that lots of other people, uh, you know, indie dyers on Instagram are always talking about having to get wholesale orders out. So I know that indie dyers are doing it. Um, but having been new to like a business like this, I wasn't really familiar with how that worked, why I would do that, how it would benefit me, you know, so on and so forth. And so kind of like over the course of the time that I've had this business, I've become educated on the whole process of wholesaling and have determined that it's just not for me. It's just not what I want with my business right now. It's not part of my business model, I guess you could say. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to chat a little bit about, you know, why I choose not to wholesale, what it means to me to be a small batch independent yarn dyer, what that small batch means. Um, because it is, as I've come to realize in doing this business, it's an incredibly important factor in what I do. I think that that is kind of like a driving force behind what I do because it kind of shapes like how I develop my business. I don't, you know, I'm not really sure how to like clar clarify that, I guess, but it just, it's what makes me feel like what I'm doing is unique in its own right. You know, so it's just, for me, it's just a personal choice. So why is it that I don't wholesale and what exactly does it mean to be a small batch independent yarn dyer? So I guess when it comes to this question, um, the first thing I think about is creative control. And I know that um, when you do wholesale, you kind of dye yarn based on what the, the retailer is looking for in their shop. And, and that's well and good. That's how yarn shops run. That's how they exist. And that's great. Um, but I wanted in my, at least in my, in the infancy of my business, and even now, like I, if, and for the unforeseeable future, I want complete creative control of what I put in my shop 99% um, of the time. I do offer special orders um, in you know three or more skeins, and then of course my solids are all dyed order. Um, but that, does, that to me isn't a sacrifice of creative control um, because it's just, you know, it, it's, it's something that makes a convenience for my customer. And of course the customers are, are really important and providing, you know, something that is desired is really important. And I guess I don't even know if necessarily wholesaling is relinquishing all creative control. I would have to speak to somebody who wholesales their yarn to really kind of know, and maybe I should. Um, but for, for me right now, I wanted to make sure that, it, like I said, at least in that infancy of the business, that I was in complete control of what colorways were going out, what yarn bases were going out, and I wanted to be in control of the promotion and the business end of it um, and, and how knowing that in this first year, the rate of success that I've had is, you know, directly tied to like the, the promotion that I've done. So I don't know. I don't know exactly what that sounds like, but creative control is a big one for me. And so I wanted to kind of keep that as, as much as I could. Um, and not have to dye, you know, loads and loads and loads of yarn to be sent out for a wholesale order um, that was based on the desires of somebody else, taking away from my opportunities of having shop updates, you know, my small scale kind of shop updates. So 
I don't know. That's just, that's why it's important to me that I sell my yarn exclusively from my website. So yeah, I mean, exclusivity is a really big part of it. And I guess like, I don't think there's any shame in wanting to be exclusive with a product that you create. You know, any yarn dyer will tell you that there's a lot of time, um, energy, you know, effort that goes into doing what we do. Um, and, and not, in, not even necessarily physically doing what we do, but the, the mental, you know, creative process that goes into coming up with the colorways, you know, deciding how to promote those colorways, what kinds of things in your shop, you know, how those colorways will pair with other things in your shop, you know, what speaks to you creatively, what, how to find your inspiration, all of that, you know, that takes so much time and energy. Um, and, and not only that too, like most of us, from what I can gather from, you know, Instagram and other sources like that, you know, we do a lot of this from our home. I know that there's a lot of, uh, I've noticed a lot lately that yarn dyers are, you know, renting studio space to allow themselves more, you know, production space. Um, but, but I do notice that a lot of us are doing this from our homes. You know, we're around our families. Um, our families are involved in what we're doing. Like, you know, my hands or my husband's hands, you know, and sometimes even like, other family members that help me, you know, our hands touch everything that comes out to you. It's a very personal person to person interaction um, that happens there. And I think that that's something that you just, you know, you don't get a lot of anymore. You know, you don't get that direct contact anymore. And I think that there's no shame in, in not having that, but there's also a lot of, a lot to be said for desiring that in your small business. And so that's kind of another reason why I enjoy having that exclusivity of you know my yarn only being being able to be purchased from my site because I know that when you make an order from me um, you will get your yarn you know packaged and sent to you or prepared you know by me um, when you contact me for information you know I'll be the one who responds everything's very you know personal and I guess that's what I love about it I love you know, the personal nature of this business. Now, one thing I do understand about wholesaling um, is that there's definitely, you know, you get a, there's a consistent uh, movement of product. You know, you can rely on orders because you kind of are in an agreement with your retailer that, you know, you're gonna send them a certain batch of yarn at certain times I mean, each month uh, so that they can stock their shop, you know, until, unless they decide to no longer carry your yarn and that's completely up to the retailer. But um, there's definitely that consistency. You can rely on that income. And that's, you know, and, and for most businesses, like in businesses in general, um, that's, you know, that's a good practice because you can rely on that income and that's steady income. And, and when you become really successful and in, in very high demand sometimes you have to you go down that route because it's just more um, lucrative I guess you could say uh, and that's an incredible argument for why you would want to die wholesale or excuse me why you would want to sell wholesale and it's also an argument that early on when it when I was considering it is what really ultimately kind of caused me to think about it um, but I also knew that with that comes a little less creative control. You know, you're kind of at, uh, not the mercy, that sounds crazy, but like, you know, you're, you're being asked to do something based on what a retailer needs in their shop. Um, you do uh, have a lot more work that you need to do. There's a lot more on your plate. And look, like if you're looking for great success and like a massive, you know, output of product and you, and you want it to become a, a big source of income, like that's what you have to do. And, and I get that. And I, I see as my business has grown, my husband and I have talked about, you know, you know, what are we going to do with this? Like it's growing. Um, this is becoming a major chunk of the family income and um, that's great. And, and I know that if I started wholesaling my yarn, that would even grow. Um, but I'm still not, you know, I'm not ready to do that yet for the for the things I talked about earlier. But you know, I do understand like all the arguments for wholesaling, and, and also no, like if you're watching this and you feel compelled to defend, you know, people who wholesale their craft products, you know, no need to do that because this isn't this is definitely not like a judgment thing by any means. This is a personal decision and kind of just why 
I choose to do it, 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 it why how why it works for me. Um, and I know that there's other yarn dyers in my you know doing what I'm doing who also have made that choice, and I'd be curious to pick their brains to to know why they chose to do it that way. Um, but yeah, so yeah, this is definitely not by any means a judgment because you know some of my biggest inspirations for doing what I'm doing uh, are big yarn dyers who clearly wholesale their products because they do so, such a great volume so just some things that I definitely consider So small batch is all a part of that really. I, um, you know, when I dye yarn, I don't dye mass, massive amounts. Um, I, at any given time, my stock in the shop uh, is anywhere between um, 16 to uh, 20 of any individual uh, colorway or base or what have you. Um, and sometimes it's less than that. Uh, depending on the colorway, if I know a colorway sells out like hotcakes, I do more. If I know that um, it doesn't sell as fast, but I want to get it out there because I want to cycle my colorways through, um, I do less. And so it's kind of just based on you know all of the things I've observed in the way that you know the, the commerce uh, works with my business. Um, that's how I determine which colorways I put in the shop and how many of each, but typically it's small batch. Um, now I'm not working on my stove in my kitchen. I'm not quite, I'm not that small of a batch anymore. I was doing that in the very, 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 like almost maybe like the first, when I first started dying, even before my shop opened, I started doing some things in my kitchen, but I, I didn't want to do that anymore. I had a little one and I just didn't really want, you know, dye powder in my kitchen for number one, like the huge mess. And number two, you just don't want that kind of stuff in your kitchen. Um, and so then I moved down into my garage in our previous place, set up my big tables, my burners, uh, my steam table pans, as well as my big pots. And I, it became more of a production a little bit, you know, I could do more. Um, and so, you know, and also too, you know, energy capacity in the house, like you can only have so many things plugged in before you blow a breaker. And if I had a dollar for every time I've blown a breaker, um, and um, you kind of have to feel out, you know, what works and, and what doesn't work um, based on like where you're plugging things in and making sure it's not on the same, you know, break. I'm not sure how all of that works. I'm not an electrician, but you get what I'm saying. And so, that kind of is also dictates like how much I can do at any given time. Um, and so I kind of max out at how much I can do in one go. And when I die for updates, I do several goes, you know, several days before the update, I'm doing batch after batch after batch. And one batch of yarn, um, when it comes to, when you call it a batch, it's not the same as for me, uh, a dye lot. A dye lot, and I don't definitely don't label dye lots because the dye lots are so small. A dye lot would be like one pan. So like what I have, um, going on in, in this pan right here, that's one dye lot. And that's one, obviously one colorway in here. That's one dye lot. Now all of the pans that I would have going in this particular colorway, and that's not the case now because this is just a special order, um, that whole, you know, uh, kind of assembly line of pans with that one colorway would be a batch. Um, and so that's kind of how I break it down. And I, I don't know if that's like universal, that's just how I do it. A lot is one pan or one pot. A batch is however many um, pans or pots you're doing of that particular colorway. So I kind of keep it based on my capacity, what I can do, um, and also to the popularity of a colorway. Um, or if I'm planning just a bigger update, maybe I'm going to be because you know upcoming this summer we're going to be planning we're going to be planning a trip, and so the shop update prior to that trip will be a larger one to keep the shop stocked for a little bit longer period of time. I do not like to have an empty shop. I love the idea of selling out of everything because that means success, um, and that's fantastic. So I'm definitely not going to complain if I sell out of everything. But most of the time, um, I try 
to uh, sometimes I won't put so I'll stagger things into the shop or I'll um, just kind of pull things from the shelves to be put into the shop later um, just to keep the shop stocked if you go to visit the shop I want it to have product in there for you to look at um, so it's not like walking into an empty store that's just kind of the way I choose to do things I kind of like it that way So here's one lot, for example. This is one um, dye lot, meaning that all of the colors, or excuse me, all of the skeins of yarn that come out of this pan will be essentially in the same dye lot. Now, um, in this particular colorway, uh, four skeins go in the pan. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four. Um, and you can see that that's a really small dye lot, so for me to list every single dye lot would be really difficult. Um, but, but this is a dye lot, and I'm gonna go ahead and stick my yarn in there. And this is actually a special order for someone, and they requested uh, three skeins of this colorway, um, but because this is a four skein colorway um, per lot, there will be one extra of this particular colorway, which is always a lot of fun, because I can throw it into the shop. Somebody who's been looking to get their hands on that colorway could snag it, and especially in the case of this one, this is Summer Drop Cloth, um, and that's a pretty, pretty popular colorway right now and for good reason it's absolutely gorgeous uh, so there's gonna be one of these going into the shop but they are working so they've been working on this house across the street from us for a while so you can like hear all the work going on over there okay. So kind of that's like, I guess that's kind of what was on my mind and I thought I wanted to share it. And it's, it's important to like remember that if you are embarking on um, a small business, <clears throat> whether it be, you know, like a craft business or, you know, any business really, um, just remember that you are the one who determines your business and your business model. And however successful you want to be is completely in your control. You have to make choices. Um, turn my music down. You make choices uh, based on what works, what you're capable of doing, your capacity. It's really important to, to when you're starting a small business to remember your capacity is key. Um, there's only so much that we can do. And I was talking to um, Nicole from NSP Designs. She's an incredible project bag designer, one of my favorites. Um, and we were just chatting about something that we're, we have plans for, and she made this comment. She says that I have delusions of grandeur about what I can do accomplish in one day. And um, and I, that resonated with me because so often in a business like this, we do. We have these grand ideas of what we're able to accomplish, what we can do for our business. But then when we remember and we get to the point where we're actually going to execute those things, um, we remember we are one person. And not only are we one person, we're one person, but we're one member of, of a family. You know, we're a piece of, of a whole family unit. And um, and that's important too. You know, you, I'm, I do this business. I run this business from my home because it provides me with a great income for our family, but also with ability to be home with my children when my husband goes to work. And so I can still be a stay at home mom and run a business at the same time. And that's taxing. That takes a lot of management, um, you know, time management, making sure you're not, um, 
that it's not at the cost of things that are really important, like your family, especially considering I have a two and a half month old baby. Um, so you have to remember your capacity, it's important. And then you also have to remember, you know, your creativity and how much control in that department you want. If you're okay with, you know, allowing people to dictate, you know, what you create, uh, which of your products you have to produce in, in a given timeline, and there's nothing wrong with that, please remember that there's nothing wrong with that. That's business, that's smart business. Um, if you have the capacity to do that and you don't mind doing that, then go for it because it's smart business. If you want 100% creative control in your business at any given time, then you know consider that. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. And that, of course, may change, but that's just kind of where I'm at right now. So two things to remember: you know your capacity and your creative control limits. You know, like how much creative control do you want? Um, and never do it at the cost of important things like family and the people that we love. Uh, and that's going to happen sometimes. You know, sometimes that happens, and that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It just means you're running a business. You know, sometimes I have to uh, skip dinner or I have to um, kind of be out here most of the day while my family is doing something else. And that's sometimes, and that's okay. That doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong or being a bad parent um, by any means. You know, you're working and that's, and that's okay. So just some things that I wanted to share with you guys, some things that were on my mind. And I thought I'd take my time, you know, out in the dying studio to kind of chat with you while I'm getting some work done. So thanks for hanging out with me and have a great day.